Bookworms Horror Podcast is sponsored by Creepy Crate. Creepy Crate is a horror and true crime subscription box filled with spooky collectibles, macabre accessories, and terrifying goodies. Each bi-monthly box is filled with over $85 of terror and includes at least one horror or true crime book. This box delivers dread to your doorstep for just $39.99 with free shipping. Go to creepycrate.store to subscribe. Use the code bookworm5 at checkout to get $5 off your subscription. That's bookworm5 for $5 off your subscription. And now to the show. Okay, on this week, we are going to talk about book reviews, how to get them, I guess, uh, how to react to them. So, I just finished Carney. Oh. Yes, and I loved it. Oh, thank you. I want to know, as a reader who wants to write a review, where can I go to do this? And if I didn't know, what would you tell me? Um, But... I love the book. Definitely a page turner. I couldn't put it down. I read some reviews about Carney, and you even said this last week that some people have an issue with Dag. I don't have an issue with him, and I don't know what that says about me. Um, well, you know, I think that I, I was kind of anticipating that people would have a, a problem with Dag. Um, I think that I liked what Andrew Lyle said, the, the, the writer who wrote the foreword. He's a friend of mine, but he said he did a video about it, um, and he said he acknowledged that Dag was a scumbag, but he said you root for him. I don't know if he's so much. That's my thing. I don't see him as a scumbag. I I didn't write him as a scumbag. Like in, when I was writing him, I wasn't thinking scumbag. I was thinking other people might see him that way, but to me, he was a a flawed character, definitely kind of spoiled by his parents and that was pretty obvious but i you know he was going through his own struggles he had his good qualities yeah i found him it was it was really well done because i understand that he's coming from a place of like the me too where he abused this woman stephanie and that's what everybody knows about him but you can see him trying to do better but he just doesn't yeah. have it in okay. him to be better right and i agree i root for him but what was so cool about it was i also rooted for carney at the same time interesting you know like because i want it you know you you're reading this and you want to see the carnage pun intended mm-hmm. um so i didn't like i wanted him to win but i also was like no if he if he succeeds i'll never get to see carney you know Right. In full flesh. So, you know, you want that, even though you don't. It was really good. Really well done. I really enjoyed oh, it. Thank you so much. I read. It was really nice after reading Ghost Story. That was such a, I mean, struggle to get That's through. And I thought there was something wrong with me. And then I got your book and I'm like, no, nope, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, it well, was. Well, you know, I do. I do try to write page turners. So I get that. I get that um, comment a lot. And that always makes you feel good. That's a good thing. Yeah. It. Absolutely. I, I tore through that book. Like literally, I think it was a week or less that I, it took me to read it. Cause I was just like every chance I get, I was at work reading it, you know, and everybody's, oh, awesome. everybody's, what are you reading? And I'm like showing them the cover and they're like, Oh, I talk about it. So now well, let's, if, if you, if you write a review, which I hope you will, did, you bought the book, right? Yeah. I got the physical book. Okay. Then you can write a, a review on Amazon. And they may are the Amazon reviews, I believe, are automatically get recorded on Goodreads as well. But you might want to check on that. So, yeah. Or you could do a review of, on your own on your any of your platforms. Well, yeah, that's something I can un- I understand. I can go and put on YouTube and stuff like that, which I probably will. But I'm trying to figure this out. Like if somebody wrote a book, which you did. Mm-hmm. That the next thing is marketing it and getting people out there to review it. So I was on Goodreads 
and I like gave it a five star review on Goodreads, and then I didn't write anything yet, and I didn't know okay. that about Amazon because I guess that means Amazon owns Goodreads. Yes, I didn't know that. So explain to the listeners what an ARC is, because I noticed there are some reviews that says something about that. An ARC is an advanced reader copy, and that comes from traditional publishing where, uh, uh, let's say, before a book is released, they would send out advanced reader copies to the New York Times and to all the major newspapers and other periodicals ahead of time. It's even like a month ahead of time. And often these would be uncorrected drafts, which you can sometimes find in bookstores, uncorrected drafts. Mm. It's kind of an interesting, maybe collector's item for certain authors, but uh, they're supposed to destroy them after they read them. But, you know, people probably hang on to them, some of them anyway. And they, they write the review from that, that arc. So when the book is released, there's already some reviews or advanced reviews on my, on, on my book, Carney, I used, and we can get, I mean, I have this in my notes. We can, I can bring this up now or later, but it's, it's a way of, it's a, it's a service where you can get um, advanced reviews. All right. So the advanced reader copy, are you the people on Goodreads that said, and here's the thing, uh, just because they get an advance review copy doesn't mean they have to do a positive review. Is that correct? Yes. And so the service I use, and uh, some people uh, don't like to use uh, any kind of review service. I would never use a review service where I paid someone to give me a good review. I don't believe that's ethical. But NetGalley is a lot of publisher. Most of the major publishers use NetGalley. At least I've seen a lot of like traditionally published books on there and some indies as well. And they're separated by genres. And, and I also have a NetGalley account as a reader. So I've used it to read advanced copies of books. Um, but Do you, you have to pay to be a NetGalley? NetGalley. Galley, NetGalley reader? Like to be a part of that website, I do you have to pay? I don't think you have to pay to read. You have to pay to put your book up. Okay. And it's, it can be expensive, but I used another service that's kind of like a secondary service that, or, that does it for cheaper, which is called Book Go Social. Some people don't like that service either. I think what happens is that I've done this for the last few books I've released, and I actually like it because it gives me reviews right away. And yes, they're not always good. So some people have, I've read reviews about NetGalley before I signed up and a lot of authors were complaining because they were getting bad reviews. You have no control over that. It's, it's an honest system and <laughs> no one likes getting bad reviews. I know I got one uh, kind of bad review, but um, for, for Carney, and, for Carney. And, and that was one, uh, the reader does reads a lot of books on NetGalley and because they've read so many books and they have so many reviews. Their review is the first one that pops up on my page when Carney comes up, but that's okay because I'm happy. I'm happy that it's gotten positive reviews, but you all, and this is something we can talk about now or we can get to uh, as an author, you have to be able to handle the bad reviews. It's part, it's like a, it's a rite of passage. We all go through it. If your book got nothing but five star reviews, there would be something wrong with it. Just in the, in the same way, if it, if it got one or two star reviews, that you might want to re- look at what's wrong with that book. Do you feel you can just not read reviews, or you think that's advice that is too hard to follow? Well, I I only generally read reviews uh, when I like now when I released a new book. Uh. Because I'm curious as how it's landing, if it's if people are getting it, you know, and I paid for the service, so I want to see. But after a while, I have over 20 books on Goodreads, and I don't like I don't get an alert if I get a review on them, so I don't go through and like read all of those 20 books, checking the reviews. I, I might notice that hey, I've got a couple more reviews. Uh, I wonder which one got reviews, and then. You can you can see your average rating on 
on Goodreads. So if it went up, then it was probably a good review rate. If it went down, probably a bad review. If if it didn't move, then it probably was a you know average review. So I don't know. I used to obsessively read my reviews, but I don't really do it as much now. And I try not to go through like every book and see this is going to review. It, it gets to be a little like I don't know. So, so once you, once while. you once you publish the book, though, where are you going to see? Do you have to jump into all these different websites to see what your reviews are? Like, or is there uh, one location that you're seeing it all? Well, I'm just seeing. I'm just basically looking on Amazon and Goodreads. And Goodreads is used a lot more than Amazon. I know that I always review and here's, here's how I, I, this is a personal thing. Like I don't review books on Amazon. I mean, on Goodreads for other people. I use it as a notebook of, I just finished this book. Here's my thoughts about it for myself. So I can go back and see what I thought about it. I, Um, I do that too. I have a separate account as a reader. So I rarely even log into my author account. They say, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, negative feelings about Goodreads for various reasons and some legit reasons. But one thing that you'll hear over and over when you'll see it when people are discussing it is that Goodreads, is, it's, it's a service for readers, not authors. Yes. Because, yeah, so you, as an author, you can join different forums and things like that. But I really use it as a writer. I mean, as a reader, not a writer. So I read this thing about using, and I don't, I don't know if it's at the back of any of your books, but have you ever put a call to action at the back of your book that says, hey, if you're like this book, please go to these places to review it? Yeah, you know what? I, I have done that in the past, and I forgot to do that with Carney. But you're absolutely right. I should, I should upload a new version and put that in the back because... Well, this is something I have in my notes, like how to get reviews as an indie author. And the first thing I have is one that I tend to forget, which is ask. Yes. Another thing you can do is uh, send ARCs out to uh, booktubers, book talks, all all these people that do reviews. But I would say always ask first because I know I'm a booktuber. I don't have time to read all the re- books people used to send me. So I, I have a polite note saying I really can't accept any more books because I already have a stack of ones that I haven't read yet. And it's also, it's asking a lot to have someone read your book. I mean, it does take a lot of time. Like you said, it took me a week to read my book, which I really appreciate you take that effort and, and do it. But um, I would say ask. Just don't randomly send out your book. Yeah. Speaking of that, if you enjoy this podcast, you could leave a review on Apple's review or whatever podcast you listen to, because that helps this show. And that's what we're talking about. Yes. Thank you. Reach out. Same with books. If you have a book, reach out and tell people, because you know, what's funny, like people normally, if, if they're going to read your book anyway, they really don't have a problem going that extra step. If you ask them. It's just that they don't think about it. We have so many things on our minds that your reader doesn't think about some of this stuff. And if you just throw it out there, like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. That's not a problem. Yeah. So, and, you know, I don't like I don't like writing book reviews on, on Goodreads. I don't consider myself a reviewer, even on my booktube channel. I, I discuss books, but I don't really do, like, traditional reviews. But I at least always leave a rating and maybe a couple words about what I thought. Yeah, you know what's interesting, and I see this in not just reviews, but in general, like if you have a job where people will rate you at your job, mm-hmm. it's the ones that seem to be really upset that write the most, you know? Oh, true. And and that's the same, like if you go and have a great experience at Applebee's, you probably won't say anything about it, but if you have a bad experience, you're going to let everyone know. And yes. <laughs> like those Yelp reviews that go on and on yes. all caps. And so yeah, and someone gets mad. I don't know about with books. I know that I do what you do. Like normally it's just a star review on Goodreads. I'll put a star review up there. 
Um, now I just put a couple notes for myself, but if it's really bad, like I read that book by the guy who was in the office, uh, Dwight Schrute dude. He has some weird religious book. Um, oh, I, don't I, even know what I thought it was going to be better of like how to just be a better world, a better community. And it turned out to be him just trying to create a new religion. It was like, oh, uh, Yeah. And I, I had it? to, yeah, I read it and I had to <laughs> write this long, awful review about it. Cause I was like, oh my God, the last well, thing we need is this book. Yeah. I mean, when I started off with, even with my blog, I did more traditional book reviews. Some of them might still be up and, and same with my booktube channel, but then I kind of, it, it kind of shifted, but there are people who, who are really serious about writing book reviews and mm-hmm. It, I mean, if you can find them in your genre, you can ask them if but, they would, uh, send, you know, read your book. Yeah. But there's also something I do have to mention, which is a kind of Goodreads mean girls culture, I'm calling it, where you'll see this mostly on young adult fiction. And I've gotten a few of these where it's just like they're, they're not really – responding to the, your book as much as they're making fun of it with like gifs and, or is it gifs? I've, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Okay. Uh, and like goofy pictures and kind of like ridiculing the book and like saying how much they hate it and kind of really going off. And it, it's like a form of entertainment in its own way. It's, I can see how an author might get a little peeved at getting one of those reviews, but as we've, learned in in recent and not so recent history of authors behaving badly, which we can touch on a little bit. It's really a bad idea to, to respond or react to a negative review in, in that way where you're counterattacking or, you know, there, there have been instances of stalking where an author, I won't name names, but an author stalked someone who gave their book a bad review and actually, like, left a package on their door, like that. Kind of oh going. my god! Yeah, and like, it wasn't like a, a bomb, but it was like <laughs> here's it was like here's my next book. Maybe you'll like this one better. But that's creepy behavior, you know. Yeah, that is strange. And, and then there was a a really unhinged person that, um, uh, like, I think it was this was in the UK. He found out. Either the the girl who did the review was either working at a wine store or he followed her into a wine store. Anyway, he hit her over the back of the head with a wine bottle and ended up going to jail for like a couple of years over that attack. So definitely don't do that. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. And of course, last week or two weeks ago, we had our own uh, booktube drama or, or it was a book talk drama where an author who had a traditional publishing contract lost it because she was, she made all kinds of fake Goodreads accounts and was what's called review bombing, giving one star reviews to her competition while elevating her own book. And she was caught and lost her contract and her career and was a complete you know, it was a complete uh, public humiliation. So don't do that. Yeah, I think what I want to bring up now is you're not in competition with your other author friends, you know. Um, of course, there's a lot of books out there and there's only so much time. So you want them to pick your book, but don't think of somebody else as your competition. They could be, I think Stephen King said it. They asked, like, how do you feel about J.K. Rowling and these books or, you know, the Harry Potter He's like, I love it because it, she's getting young people to read. And mm-hmm. when they get older, they're probably going to pick up one of my books because they're a reader. Yeah. And I think if, if somebody's picking up someone's book, they're a reader. And that, that you don't know that that may lead them to you. Yes. And it, drama aside, it's cool that people are passionate about books, even to write a long review or something. I mean, not to... Uh, say it's cool to attack but i would also say as an author and a reader it's important to remember for readers to remember that there is a human being behind that author account or that book 
especially with indie authors. I think traditional published authors are a little more protected that way, but when you're getting personal attacks for a review, I, there's nothing wrong with reporting that review. I've had to do that once or twice where it's not, where someone's using like uh, inappropriate wording or speech to, to attack the book, attack the author. Yeah. I want to bring up that. Like I wrote a bad review about Dw- Dwight Schrute, you know, like this guy is famous, probably just his name made him a New York times bestseller. I don't know what his real name is. What is it? Mm-hmm. Rain Wilson or something? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, anyway, I wouldn't do that to an indie author. And I, and I also was like this with uh, indie films or anything like somebody like just Regina, just you completing a book and getting it out there. That's amazing. And oh, thank you. that's what like just that simple thing is what everybody who's probably listening to this is trying to do to get something on paper and get it out in the world. And then, you know, the reviews come in, but I'm not going to go slam somebody who's an indie author. Like I might have some, like even the bad review you got, not when I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it's not that bad. <laughs> no, if we're talking bad. about the same one, there's yeah, one. No, one that said that the, the dad character. Yes. It, it, I yeah. don't think it deserves the two stars. This guy gave it because everybody says this. And I, I, you know what I was reading these reviews and I'm like, boy, you got another book with Carney in it. Like, because Everyone loves the myth about Carney and the history of that, char- you know, the character. And yeah. and I feel like you could expand on that in a second Carney book and it would work. I could go. Yeah, I could do Carney too. Or a Carney, yeah, prequel or something. Yeah. Uh, because that, and he loved that part. It's just the dad character, which I think, uh, to me, I related a lot to the dad character. And I mean, I'll put it in my review, but honestly, I... I texted you saying I like Aurora mm-hmm. and then I ended up not liking her. Like, yeah. And I was like, boy, she reminds me a lot of the girls. And this is weird. I don't know. Maybe it's a Bucks County thing, but you caught that sort of lifestyle around here where like, if you're going to party in the woods and stuff like that. And right. she reminded me of a lot of like young ladies that I dated that I were like, I get what Dag's doing. And I think one of the best reviews, I thought it was so funny. It was probably a four star, but I'll say, uh, let me see if we can find that line. Here we go. Uh, A main character who could not make a good choice if his life depended on it. Oh, right. Yeah. I love that. So much bloody chaos. Such a page turner. I agree 100%. I think that's what I liked about Dag was like, he was frustrating. and. It was like, oh, he's like, he's hitting it. And then he's taking, taking like one step forward and two steps back throughout the whole book. Yeah. And he, I mean, I, I like writing flawed characters and I've said this before, but they're more, much more interesting to me. And I did have a lot of affection for Dag. <laughs> like I didn't try to make him uh, unlikable, but I, but, but objectively, I knew that because he, the things he said and thought, but I think he's probably like a lot of dudes. I do. I, I, I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I think people are afraid to admit that. And I think it, mm-hmm. it was an honest character. I think that's what I enjoyed about it. It was like, this is a guy and these are the thoughts that are going through his mind. And that's fine. I think to me, what frustrated me was him making those bad choices. Yeah. I didn't hate him for that. I'm just saying. And I think that's what makes it a page turner. Like th- this is great because you're putting, it's very simple what he wants. He wants to be back on top. Right. And every move he makes, he's almost there. And then he does something stupid or ends up in some situation. And it's like, come on. But that's well, why you you're know, rooting they, for him. Right. But they, exactly. But they said, you know, you have to beat up your protagonist. Yeah, no, I agree. I think you did a wonderful job beating him up. Yeah, I, I had fun beating him up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and Aurora definitely, you know, she's one of those girls. <laughs> I did want to say one thing about you know, coming from an author's point of view. I, when I said, remember, there's a human being behind 
that review that you're putting down. I did a review and I actually really liked the book called The Season of the Witch. I forget the author's name, but it was a it's a traditionally published book. It's not that it's pretty new last few years about the occult and rock and roll. And I did a, a, a book review or discussion rather on my YouTube channel and the author immediately contacted me and we got into like a really great chat and he watched uh, Gemini rising, one of my projects and was like really cool. And he, he sent me a free book that he signed for, to do a giveaway. So my point is you can make a great contact with somebody, an author by That's reading right. their book, if you want. And now some people don't would be thrown by that. I, I'm not, as long as somebody, you know, it's, it's, it's like, if they, like if they like my book or even had some constructive criticisms, that was one thing, but I do have a few pet peeves and uh, as, as an author, and that would be like personal attacks in book reviews, like with Goodreads. And, and not only this has happened to not just me, but people I know, authors I know with, you know, they, they break up with somebody and that person goes on and just starts uh, carpet bombing their books with one star reviews, that, that kind of behavior. There's not a lot of protection of, 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 against that as authors. I mean, you can report it, but I don't even know if they take them down. But another thing is don't tag me on a bad review. You know, <laughs> like if you, if you trash my book on YouTube, don't tag me on it. Like I'd rather not know. I can maybe find it on my own, but it's like, yeah, I just wanted to let you know I hated your book and I just thought you should know that. For someone who's doing their first book and putting it out there, do you remember when you put Unmasked out how how much you looked at reviews and how you handled negativity in that? That is a really good question because I, I remember my first, it wasn't even a review. I just got a two-star rating, my first like two-star rating on Unmasked. Uh, Joe and I were driving to uh, down south to go to Thanksgiving at his family's house and in Virginia. And I had, I pulled it up on my phone and I remember this horrible feeling, like the sinking feeling of being criticized and and it, it was a really like scary feel. I don't know. It's like it's like getting an F on a test in school. Yeah. You know? And but, but publicly because it's it, it, that's the thing is like you get an F, the teacher hands it to you, no one else knows what you got. Right. But this is like getting an F and the whole classroom knowing. Yes. And I think and I mentioned before, it is a rite of passage for every author and you can't be scared of that. I think it can be really traumatizing the first time it happens. And especially if other people jump on and make fun of it, and you know, it, it helps you to develop a, a, a thicker skin as a writer. And, and like with, with Carney, I, I'm, I'm anticipating more, if I get more reviews, I hope I do, uh, readers who aren't crazy about DAG, like my main character, and I'm, I'd rather write the character I wanted and feel good about that than worry that someone's not going to like my character. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and write a different book because I'm scared that we've talked about fear before. And that that's a creativity killer. Number one, creativity killer. Yeah. So, so you have to get over that first initial, if it happens, I think it happens probably to everyone that first really bad review what I do and I recommend if you if you read a, a bad review and, uh, on your book is go on your favorite author's, your favorite book, pull it up and just read the one star reviews. Right. You'll feel better. Like all the Stephen King books that have gotten one star reviews. Yeah. All of your favorite authors have gotten bad reviews. And just like you, like you read Ghost Story, you weren't you didn't really like it. It's one of my favorites. People well, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. People have different opinions about books and that's great. And what's interesting is years ago, it's probably when I had, this is some scene I was, had a podcast and I remember there was a friend of mine who had a website that reviewed movies and he would put this five-star review on a movie. And I knew he was a Jaws fan. Like we, mm. we, that was the one thing we had in common. And I said, what, 
you're calling this movie five stars. What would you rate Jaws? And he's like, well, five stars. I'm saying, you're saying this movie's as good as Jaws. He's like, no, what I'm saying is that when I watched the film, I had a five-star experience. Okay. Like, and I think that's kind of like when I'm talking about Ghost Story, I, I rated Carney higher than Ghost Story with stars, right? I gave Carney five. I gave, I think, Ghost Story three. Mm-hmm. And you could say, well, this is Peter Straub and it's this and that. But the experience for me was not a five-star experience. Sure, he had some great parts that were written and beautifully written. But the story was a struggle for me to get through. And Carney, I had a, it, it was a fun ride. It's just like that. Like if you go yeah. on a carnival like in, and you go on some rides, some are like a carousel and some are like a roller coaster, you know? Yeah, and I think that is exactly how I rate books as well on, on Goodreads. Did I have a good experience? Because I can, exactly. Peter Straub is a renowned author. He's a great writer. But if you didn't have a good time with the book, if you were bored and it was a struggle, then it's not a five-star read. And it's not even a knock on Peter Straub or the book. No. It's not at all. It's my experience with that book, which somebody else like Regina will have a better experience with that book. And I will tell you right now that there's going to be people who read Carney who will not have the experience I had. And that's okay. It's not, it's not about you. It's about the reader. It's about the reader. And honestly, I've had people say, Oh, you have to read this book. It's so good. And then I'm like, Oh God, I hate this book. (laughs) I don't want to hurt their feelings, but uh, this book sucks. But yeah. that's my experience. Exactly. So, and if a book is universally loved, maybe as a classic, but I bet I bet if you go on and read, I don't know, Dostoevsky or some great author, Charles Dickens, you're going to find one star reads because people didn't like it or they struggled to get through it or it was too long or too boring or what, or too hard to read or whatever it is. Yeah, and even something like Ulysses by James Joyce. Here's a book that I don't know if anybody can get through, but if you're a snob, I've never read it. Right, but if you're if you're like a liter- literature snob, you're going to be talk about James Joyce and how you if you don't know that book or understand that book, then you're not really, you know, whatever. Right. And I'm I don't not agree a real with that. Reader. Yeah, no, I don't agree with that either. I don't. I'm not into the the snobbery. But there certainly is that in the world of literature. Yes. That's why we, we should, as authors, relax a little bit about it. Although uh, reviews are important, though, as far as the uh, Amazon algorithm will push the oh, higher yeah. reviews as suggestions. And sometimes a book that just has a one-star review or like a one rating, one review. I have a couple shorter works that have that. They never get any kind of engagement. So what do you think about allowing your ebook version of the out there for free? How does that, has that has helped you in the past? I do give away quite a few ebooks. In fact, Carney's on sale now. I know for 99 cents. cents. That's such, until, I've such, so if you don't buy it for 99 cents, you're an idiot because it's worth so much more than that. It's yeah, and uh, everyone who, who's paid the full price are probably mad. It was it's a part of a promo that I uh, participate in on Book Funnel, which is another. It's not really a review site, but it's a site to help get uh, to build up your uh, mailing list. Which so, yeah, you're you're very good at doing yours. I only put mine out like every few months. Oh, what my newsletter. Your newsletter. Yeah, I got to write that today. I did that promotion through Book Funnel, and I also gave out free arcs of Carney on my Patreon page, my patrons, and then I, I just put a newsletter out where I did a, a free, I gave a free um, ebook. Now, do as you a have- little Christmas gift, and I've already had like fifty downloads. Now, of those fifty downloads, will fifty people read it? No, because I know my Kindle is. Full of books that I've completely forgotten about ebooks. So, yeah, I don't. You know, if, I, if I get a couple readers, I'll be happy. Do you, have you noticed when you give things away on sale or for free that there's an uptick in reviews? No, I don't really. I don't see that correlation. There's an uptick in sales, but right. Although Carney's been selling pretty well. That's good. Yeah, it is good, and 
And it still has a pretty, even selling as well as it has, it's still not in like the top 10 horror categories, which is really hard to get. It used to not be as hard, but the competition is just so fierce in every genre. And this whole, all, all kinds of things like keyword manipulation and things like that, which maybe we can, that could be an interesting topic sometime, but it's, it's just, it's hard to get reviews. What about, so we brought this up mailing list and mm-hmm. you don't do it frequently, but when you do send out your next newsletter, will it be asking for reviews? I'm going to do that. I have, I, I'm, I'm making this my New Year's resolution to ask for reviews, which I haven't been doing. Yeah. I mean, mo- a lot of the stuff that I've listened to regarding podcasting, um, and I've listened to a lot of podcasts about podcasting, and I think it would apply here as well, is that one podcaster would say stuff like, we've done it where we would have our mailing list and people will then go and listen to the podcast. But the weeks that we didn't do our newsletter, nobody did. And he's, it was just this weird thing. They noticed that when you ask people then respond, but if you forget to tell them, they're not going to do it on their own. Yes. This is probably sales 101, which I need to get a lot better in, at figuring this out because I just don't think that way. Like even with my booktube channel, I don't, I don't, I never say, Hey, make sure you, Press the like button and subscribe. But yeah, I have I, to try to do that a little more. I honestly feel like people know that, but they don't. Like, that's the mm-hmm. weird thing. Like, I know that you're it's, supposed it's to like reminder. and subscribe. Yeah, it's a reminder. And we need those reminders. And I think the thing that you and I have is we don't want to feel like, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners don't want to feel like you're pestering people. Yeah, like that Catholic guilt. Yeah. <laughs> that we were raised with. Yeah. So I think you got to get over that and just continually ask people and not be afraid Mm -hmm. of that. And nobody's going to be upset with you because you're asking them to, hey, check out my book. Um, I enjoy, actually, I keep seeing your ads popping up for Carney. Oh, thank you. I've been uh, running some ads. Yeah. yeah, And I'm like, yeah, that's fun. They're always fun little ads. And that ad, the video ad did really well. I, I paid for a Facebook ad, not a lot. That's a whole other thing. We can do a topic on ads. Yeah. But that's gotten a lot of engagement. My friend uh, Merce from Harpies in the Trees did a really good job on that. And it's been shared a lot and people have commented. So that's good. I, and I don't know what I have to look at the analytics about like what the click rate is and all that stuff. But it's done pretty well. So, so I am getting less shy about advertising, about asking for reviews because... You know, it's it's a very competitive market. Yeah. So I want to read something from, um, it's an author. Their website is thecreativepen.com. Oh, yes. Joanna Penn. Yes. And she has this uh, advice of creating an, an advanced reader team. Mm. So what should, I'll read what is from the website. It says, as your email list grows, you can recruit keen readers who want to be on your advanced reader team, also known as a street team. You can send them new books before launch and ask them to review on publication. Here's her advice to recruit new readers to the team. Just send out an email periodically asking for volunteers. Or I thought that was a pretty interesting idea Yeah, because no, that goes back awesome. to the gorilla uh, marketing with the street team. Exactly. Well, I think that being part of a, like a genre helps with that because people want to be the first ones to read something that's coming out yeah. and maybe post reviews and stuff. So that, yeah, that's really good. Now, have you emailed book bloggers when your book comes out? Do you ever contact these people who review books that are well-known or maybe at least trying to get well-known? I have in the past. I haven't had that great of an experience with it, but yeah, I, should, there, I have done a couple uh, book. What is it? Horror Palace has done some, I could have sent them stuff that they they've done. I might. I, I probably will do. I'm not. I haven't stopped my my Carney campaign as far as getting the book out there. I'm trying a couple of different things, but yeah, I will probably continue to try to get uh, bloggers that way. So thanks for the reminder. Let me make a list for that. 
Yeah. And then social media is another way you can ask for reviews. Um, again, I think many of us have to get past this feeling of that you're bothering people. Yes. There, I mean, there's a lot, there's a, there's a gap between being that pest. And I've, I've dealt with people like that who are like, just con- contact me out of the blue. Hey, read my book. It's like, I don't, you know, you have to do a little better at uh, connecting with me first, but, you know, and, and being like, like I usually am a little shy about approaching people, but I think that, Hey, if, you can always ask. And then if they say no, you just move on. Yeah. Well, I'm not talking about pestering people on their social media. I think I'm saying like posting a, um, on your personal social media, like, Hey, read, you know, read and review, or if you, did you read Carney? Oh, right. yes. You know, like, oh, I thought you meant like contact with people through like instant messages. That you can do that. I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but I think, yes, you have to have some relationship. Yeah. I would never post something on someone's page, Like that is really, you know, m- most people know not to do that. This is something and, that, um, a lot of, doesn't matter what art or what you're doing, but what is suggested is, be part of a community, which I know you are, Regina. So, like, be part of a community that you are responding to people's posts on social media, mm-hmm. or you're giving some advice when something asks, somebody asks something. So then your name is at least known from comments and things. And then when you ask, it will be like, "Oh yeah, I, I remember Regina. She was she's always involved. She's like everybody will know your name. So you're not just some g- person coming out of nowhere, right?" Right. Be part of these either in person or online groups and get conversations going, not just about you, you know, help right. others. And if you're in one of those Facebook groups and I'm really bad about I, I, I'm a member of a lot of these Facebook groups and I'm really bad about actually getting, you know, getting involved. But you don't just pop in and say, hey, read my book. Yeah. And but, I, I'm not very good with yeah. Facebook either, but I mean. Even if it's Instagram, if somebody posts something yeah, and not just a thumbs up or a heart, like make a comment that actually is engaging. So the people know you really are not just because there's no effort. Like when you put a thumbs up or a heart or something like that, right? you know, it's just like, but if you actually read what they said or whatever, they post it and engage with something intelligent or at least thoughtful you're going to have a better response and then build that, that relationship. Right. And even if someone sends me a book, I might not be able to get to it and read it right away, but I'll take a nice picture of it and I'll put it on Instagram. Like I'll share it. So I, I feel like just to help, uh, help an author get a little bit of attention and spread, you know, share, share the uh, experience a little bit, I think is important. It, I have some, people on my in my community that I would immediately read what they put out because that's you know I had that kind of relationship with them and I like their work but if I don't know them it's it's one way of getting to know someone is just start a conversation or maybe start and read their book and talk about it and say hey what about grabbing little snippets of reviews and then marketing that have you done something in that realm like yes little things that say you know Best yes, book I've I put, ever read. I put, yeah, I'll put like those reviews in the the front of my book, like on Carney. Mm-hmm. I have, and they were not, they weren't advanced reviews for Carney because I didn't have any, but I used advanced, uh, I used reviews for my last book, Code Red. Yeah. Which just, I mean, just open a paperback by Stephen King and you'll see in the, the front matter for any, any author, they'll have reviews, advanced reviews, or if it's someone famous. Like Stephen King, they'll put it on the cover of a paperback. I used them in ads. I just used one in a recent ad I I did for Carney. Yeah, spread the love. I, I I have no problem now with with saying, hey, these people really love love my book, and making a little ad and putting it on Instagram, putting it on Facebook. Something that is 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 definitely frowned upon in the indie world, and I still see people kind of doing this and then they get scolded by other authors, which I'm, I'm not a real fan of, but is don't do a review spots. What review spots, 
swaps. Oh, swaps. Like swapping your book. Right. You give me a good review. I give you a good review. Exactly. Like just always have integrity and ethics, you know, when it comes to reaching out to people. Don't do yeah. anything that's sketchy. You're going to get caught. Um, Don't, we, yes. You could ruin your, as, as recent events have shown, you could ruin your career. And then it's you're not gonna, worth it. Yeah. And then you're going to have to go listen to our last episode about pen names so you can start over. <laughs> right. Let's uh, recap mm-hmm. certain things. I just wrote a book. I published it on Amazon. What's my next step to get reviews? Do we wait and it just happens? Or do you have to, obviously you want to get people to get the book, but is there anything you have to do on Amazon or it's just, you hope they do it besides asking? Yeah. I I don't know if there's anything to do on Amazon and you can run Amazon ads. You can run Facebook ads and ask for reviews. Use a service like NetGalley, if you want. Approach. So, what does NetGalley do? Okay, so in NetGalley, you upload your book, or else it links to the Amazon page. I forget which, and readers can download your book for free, and they're they're under no obligation to leave a review. Although they have a certain reputation that they're trying to uphold on that site. Some people on that site read voraciously. They're reading a book a day and writing reviews. This is their thing. So, uh, and it's 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 divided by genre. So someone would know they're getting a horror book. If they okay. know, downloaded my book. So the so, people who use this site want to be recognized as a book reviewer. So they're going to be wanting to find stuff to review. Yes. Or else they just like to love to read, but they should leave reviews. And most of them, I think, do. And then they, you get, I think one time, I think they send, I'm, I might be mistaken, but I think book, uh, I mean, NetGalley will send, when, when the time period is up, they send me a data sheet of all the people who downloaded my book with their email address. And I can then contact them directly if they didn't leave a review and say, hey, do you mind leaving a review if you read my book, which yeah. you got for free. And they can ignore it or they can do it or whatever. Right. Here's another thing that worked for me actually with my other podcast was if somebody does, I think you just said this, but if somebody does it like on social media or something, Hey, Regina, I really enjoyed that. Don't be afraid to say, Hey, I'm so happy to hear you enjoyed the book. Would you mind putting a review up on Amazon? Right. And most, I did this and literally every time I asked, they did it. And okay, that, I'm going to do this. And so I think that what we learned is after you upload your book, p- market it saying it's out there, and then ask for reviews. And yeah, give like it, I maybe said, give it a little time and say, hey, if you read my book and you enjoyed it, please leave a review. And also, I know you said you were going to upload a new version of Carney to have it the <laughs> the the ask at the end of the book, like you read this, you enjoyed yes. it, uh, and you could even put up a. Uh, QR code, I guess, that takes them right to the mm-hmm. reviews. I have to, I have to look into that. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing you want to do, no matter what we're working with online, is make it as simple as possible for people mm-hmm. to get to where you want them to be. Yeah. If it's more than two clicks, they're not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to have that yeah, link get them right to where they need to be. Make it easy and painless. So next week. And I was thinking about this and let me know what you think. We could do something else. But one thing I really think you shine in your, your book. You got me already. <laughs> is, I'm agreeing to this. <laughs> is dressing your characters oh, it, like okay. wardrobe, fashion. I, I think that's like so important to character. Mm-hmm. And boy, like Aurora, like every time you explained what she was wearing and Mm. it was great. You had uh, one of my favorite lines was the, um, the preppy and the unicorn. Oh, right. Yeah. I love that. Just that little three words described Mm -hmm. what you've already learned about them up until that point. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. And you know, I liked it, but I want, I was, I don't know if you're up for it, but I want to, talk about how you go about that because I, I think you do it so well. Oh, thanks. And uh, I know yeah, you I have fashion as a history 
And I know you, mm-hmm. when you did Gemini Rising as well, your, your wardrobe was on point every time. And I think yes. I personally struggle with that, like trying to figure out how I'm going to do that without overdoing it. Like you don't overdo it. Yes. And some people don't like too much like set dressing. Right. In, in books. But I think, I think, well, we can talk about this. Yeah. I, I would definitely be up for doing that. Uh, I think it's a short clothing. It's a shorthand that gives you a, a, a character. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's against type. Yeah, Usually, let's, I mean, we we know a lot about someone from how they dress or if they have pink hair. Or we, I mean, it's not everything about them, but we make assumptions. Sometimes they're wrong assumptions, but right, it's it's important for establishing character. One of my uh, which when I'm which reading which I also book, loved you. It's not just clothing. You did hair like with Rainbow Bright, which I loved that you named him, and I loved that his his name became Zip. Oh uh, yeah, and then they're like, Zip, is that Rainbow Bright? You know, like. You know, everything about that I want to talk about. Okay. Awesome. All right. More than happy to. So we'll be back next week with a fashion show. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the Bookworms Horror Podcast. All our links are in the show notes. And we'll be back next week with a new episode.